this morning I am just so encouraged and my heart really so blessed just to hear this great testimony. How many among the women here had already conceived or they got pregnant and already have given birth? Can I see your hands raised? For those of you who had already have experienced this, what if you are five months pregnant? Five months pregnant the baby inside your womb is not growing. And in fact, it is causing you to get sick. And the doctor has placed you on antibiotic because it is slowly poisoning you. To make matters worse, the doctor has have told you Imagine yourself, put yourself into this situation. The doctor has told you that the brain of the baby inside you is not developing. That there is a problem in that baby's heart. That sooner or later that baby will die. And making matters worse, it will affect you. It will cause harm to you as well. Picture and imagine yourself that you are in that situation. And to make matters worse, the doctor has given you 10 days. 10 days to make a decision to medically terminate that child. Only 10 days. To decide to abort that child. If you are in that situation, what would you feel? How would you face it? Probably, if we don't believe in God and in the name of convenience, we'll just say even without thinking twice, it's okay, go ahead, let's schedule that medical abortion. Let's do it. All in the name of convenience. But the name of convenience has lost the conscience. And what I am talking to you today is not a fiction, but it is one of our sister who attends in our church. And two Sundays ago, we have prayed for her. Right here in our midst, two Sundays ago. She was standing here. She feels so weak. She looks so sick. In fact, most of her days, she spent on bed, lying down, because she could not move. And she could not eat because she's always throwing up. This sister is the daughter of Sister Luz and Brother Eric. The doctor gave them 10 days to make a decision to legally abort that child or terminate that child. Sister Luz said, no. Sister Luz said, I believe there is a God and I believe in my God. Amen. But the doctor said, what God? There is no God here. The doctor said, there is no God here. It's the life of your child or it's the life of your daughter. And we know that there is a problem with that, with that, with that unborn child. Sooner or later, if we will not do anything, she herself will be affected. Or, But people of God, Two Sundays ago, we prayed. And we encouraged their faith. And we told them, who is this doctor that tells who or who is not going to live? It is just like 
we are acting as gods in the life of people. That we have the power to say, yes, you can live, and no, you cannot live. And miracle of all miracles, I received a text last Friday from Pastor Noel. I have told this to all the Sunday schoolers this morning. That child that they thought could never make it. For some reason, miracle took place. That the brain suddenly start growing. Then all the fluids that were abnormal start to return to normal. That everything, in short, the baby now is well. Only, said the doctor, that there is a problem in his heart. There is a hole in his heart. But even that hole in the heart, God can take care. If the brain that is not developing, God was able. <coughs> God was able to heal. How much more with that hole in the heart? And mind you, there are a lot of people that are alive that have holes in their heart. Amen. And still live. If God was able to take care of the impossible things, how much more of the little things? So in short, I just would like to encourage your faith this morning that the God we serve is a God who is alive. <clears throat> he is a God who is in the business of hearing His people. That our prayers are heard of God. Amen. I just want you to see that the God we serve is in the business of taking care of his people, even those unborn children, even those unknown <coughs> little ones. I just want your heart to be encouraged today that your prayers are not unheard. But that God still cares for us. Amen. If only we have the faith really to believe and to put everything unto Him. Amen. Sister Lou said, I could not bear the thought in my mind of allowing that unborn child to be terminated and that will be for the rest of my life something that I will be regretting. And true enough, God moved in the life of that child. Because just like what Sister Marianne have heard from the Lord, that that child has a destiny to fulfill and that the devil is doing everything to stop it to destroy it. Amen. But God's plan will prevail. Amen. 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 God's will will prevail in our lives today. And I just would like to encourage you this morning, and this is the message that God had given to our bishop in the Philippines that he wanted me to share to his church here in Jehovah, North Carolina. And the message of God in 2013 is that I will build my church. I will build my church. That is God's message for us. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock, I will build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. The Lord Jesus has said, I will build my church. I will not destroy it. I will not put it to curse. I have no intention of harming the church. Even though at times we feel that we are unworthy. Many times. Because of our failures and our sin, we feel so unworthy. 
But it is not God's intention for us to be destroyed. For, for us to be harmed. But it is for the Lord to build us up. Amen. And look at that promise. And all the powers of hell will never conquer it. Amen. First and foremost, let me tell you about Peter. Peter actually, his name means rock. It came from the Greek word Petros. Petros means a stone or a small rock. Peter did not come from the Greek word Petra. When we say Petra, it, it means a massive rock. But it came from Petros, meaning it is a small rock or stone. So in essence, the Lord is telling us here that upon this Petros or small stone, I will build my church. And who are these stones? You. Each and every one of us, we are stones. We are small rock put together so that we can build his church. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus is the massive rock. Jesus is our solid foundation. Do you still recall the, the, the parable of the wise and the foolish builder. The foolish builder built his house on the sand. But the wise builder built his house on a rock. Amen? And Jesus is telling us that his church is built on a solid, on a strong foundation. Because our foundation is not on man, but it is on Jesus Christ. And with that, he is a sure foundation. He is a strong foundation. He is a foundation that will never collapse. And with that, we, we all have the reason to rejoice. But my question to us this morning, that's why I have also entitled it, how can we build his church? If Jesus said, I will build my church, how can we participate with Jesus in building his church? So the question to each and every one of us, first and foremost is, do you belong to his church? And when I say, do you belong to his church, I'm not talking about any religious organizations. I'm not talking about any denominations. What I am talking about, do you belong to the body of believers who believe in Jesus Christ? In fact, that is the meaning of church. It came out from the word ecclesia, meaning the called out ones. So when we talk about the church in the scripture, we're not talking about a literal building. We're not talking a physical building, but we are talking a group of people who have gathered together in one common faith. And what is that faith? Faith in Jesus Christ. So do you belong to his church? Do you belong to the body of Christ? And if we answer yes, the next question would be, if we then belong to the body of Christ, what role do we play to the body of Christ? Are we a builder? Or are we, I'm sorry to say, destroyer? Are we a gatherer? Or are we a scatterer? What do you mean, Pastor Jay? Let me bring you to this point. All of us, we all have natural instincts. Or what we call self-preservation. And they have known that the animals that are still alive today that did not got extinct, it's because they have a very strong instinct of self-preservation. They know how to preserve themselves. So if they see danger, they won't wallow in danger. All right? 
And so for us humans, we also have this natural instinct to preserve ourselves or even our own. When we are in danger, we know how to protect ourselves. And not only in that aspect, even when we have enemies or probably people that intend to harm us, our families, our loved ones, our friends, we have that natural tendency to protect our own. Are you with me? But at times, we lose that instinct to preserve the church of Christ. Yes, we protect ourselves, our families, our loved ones, but the thing is that we have lost that natural tendency to protect the body of Christ. So that's why my question to us today, if we are not a builder, then we are on the destroying side. If we are not gathering, then we are scattering. What do you mean, Pastor Jay? Because Jesus has said himself, let's go to Luke chapter 11, verse 23, and also it is found in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. It is a warning for us Christians. It tells us there in verse 23, whoever is not with me is <clears throat> against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. Are you with me today, people? Amen. So my question to each and every one of us, since the Lord wants to build his church, now are we with the Lord to build his church? Are we with him in the work of building his church or we are there causing distraction? Instead of building, we are there on the way, making the process of working longer because instead of us cooperating, we are just there. Are you with me today? Mm -hmm. Distracting. And let me go with, the, with another translation. In the New Living Translation, anyone who is not with me opposes me and anyone who is not working with me is actually working against me if you would see on this particular um, scriptures there is no neutral ground here it's either we're on the left or we're on the right there is no middle ground amen it is either we are with him or we are not it's either we are working with him or we are opposing him. And let me clarify it first on the third translation. It's the message, MSG. It's not monosodium glutamate, okay? It means the message, okay, translation. For those of you who would go to uh, China King later, no MSG. <laughs> it says in message translation this is war Ooh, war what do you mean pastor jay because the um the previous um the previous uh, verses here talks about jesus delivered a possessed a demon possessed man but all those enemies of jesus have said you know, the reason why Jesus was able to deliver this man from the devil, it's because Jesus himself is the devil. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, how can devil rebuke himself? How can devil cast himself? Are you with me? If they were saying that I am a demon or I am the devil, how can I cast myself off? He said. No, Jesus said. That's why... In verse 23, Jesus said, this is war. There is a battle going on. And there is no neutral ground. Meaning, Jesus is saying, no. I am not of the devil, he said. In essence, he's saying, in verse 20, he's explaining, no. I am not part of the devil. I am not of his group. There is no neutral ground, Jesus said. If you're not on my side, you're the enemy. If you're not helping, you're making things worse. 
This morning, it is a time of warning for all of us in the body of Jesus Christ, especially here in JLV, North Carolina. It is time for us to assess ourselves. What role do we play in the body of Christ? Do we make the body of Christ move forward or are we the one pulling it backwards? Are we pushing it towards progress or are we the one delaying because of the way we serve God? If we are not a gatherer, we are a scatterer. If we are not working with him, we are working against him. If you are not with him, we are opposing him. There is no middle ground. There is no neutral ground. We have to choose today. Are we for the Lord or are we against the Lord? Amen. Amen. Because Jesus is building his church. So my question to everyone, are we willing to build the church of Christ? Are we going to cooperate with the Lord in building his church? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 to 22. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are a member of God's family. And we are the Gentiles. Amen. We are the, genti the, 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 the Gentile portion of what is being spoken here. In verse 20, together we are his house. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. What is that one thing that we could see in there? We are his house. Built on the foundation. Of the people that God had used to bring us the message. And the basic foundation or our cornerstone is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And the next phrase, we are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Please take note of that part that I have boldened and I have, in light, uh, I have underlined. We are carefully joined together in him. Just like in the Philippines, the way we built our houses there, are, they are made of hollow blocks, blocks. Here I have observed that the way houses are built here in North Carolina, they are just made of panel of woods. That's why one swirl of a tornado, everything is collapsed like a matchstick. But the way houses in the Philippines are really made of what? blocks and then they were fastened together by cement and in fact in the Philippines the um, the strongest the strongest houses that were built in the Philippines are those houses that were built in Batanes because in Batanes I mean every day there's a there's a typhoon and there's a storm there it's not a normal day if there's no st storm or rain or typhoon in there because Batanes I think is the topmost part right of our country, the nor northern tip of our country. And basically, that is a what? A typhoon zone. So the way houses are built in Batanes, they are low, but they are made of huge bricks that were fastened with cement. Okay? So that whatever storm that will go in there, their houses will still remain. So the essence here. We are made of stones, okay? Put together. Hallelujah. So that through each and every one of us, you consider yourself a stone stacked 
to one another and the Lord is fastening us together by his spirit amen and so us being stuck together we become a what a holy temple for the Lord we become a holy structure for the Lord are you with me can you can you see and can you picture what the Lord is trying to um, uh, to, to describe us that each one of us were like bricks or stones if you may put together so that we can build a spiritual structure first Peter chapter 2 verse 5 you also as living stones you are not a dead stone amen you are a living stone in the Philippines we have um, we have dead stones right yung uh, batong patay uh, amen how many of you know what I'm talking about right because uh, and by the way how many have already seen a dead stone you did and actually dead stones are very light okay they're very porous and in fact we use them to scrub the callus on our feet <laughs> they are used as scrubbing pads and at times uh, you scrub it under <laughs> your armpit but those are dead stones as they call it they are very light they are very porous and uh, and um, and they really have uh, not much use except probably for really um, removing all the um, what do you call the uh, the the lip bag the lip bag <laughs> what do you call the lip bag <laughs> the dead skin <laughs> the dirt in the neck and the dirt in the armpits so that is how it is in the Philippines because in the Philippines it's so dusty and muddy that's why when you get home you'll see all the dirt in your neck it's so black okay but in the Philippines our I mean here in the United States our dust here is white <laughs> I don't know for some reason but when we clean the, the dust at home it is white but in the Philippines it is black <laughs> it is dirty and black I don't know probably that's the reason we're dark skin right <laughs> and why people here are white skin because their dust is white <laughs> probably but the point here is that you also as living stones we are living stones amen Living stones have used us. Amen. It was, uh, it was five smooth living stones that, uh, that David have used to kill Goliath. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And in fact, some of our houses here are made of, uh, of, 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 uh, of gravel, as we call it. And some stones that are put together in cement really to build strong foundations but you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ let's go to another translation in the next slide and you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple what's more you are his holy priest amen can you look at your neighbor and tell them you are God's holy priest amen through the mediation of Jesus Christ you offer spiritual sacrifices that pleases God amen hallelujah so it's not just pastor Jay here who could come to God and pray for miracles all of us hallelujah including you people sitting there right now you are a priest of God meaning you can come to him anytime amen, amen. if you have Jesus Christ in you there are several things that our beloved Bishop had made mention I would like to for us to to uh, to uh, to hear as well so how do we build the church of Christ how can we build the church number one 
We build the church when we join ourselves together. Actually, that is found in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20, the scripture that we just have read. So we build a church when we come together to worship. Are you with me? Because it will not be a church if it's just me coming here on a Sunday. I will worship and then if I, I will lead the worship and then if I lead the worship, then I will preach. But if no one is here and all by myself, we're not a church. Hallelujah. Are you with me? At least Jesus said at least two or three. That was the criteria. So how can we build the church? We can build the church by joining ourselves together. And under that number one is by maintaining a regular church attendance. Meaning coming to church on Sunday regularly mm -hmm. Amen. not when you're in the mood Amen. Amen. in the mood or not in the mood you should be in church especially if it is a Sunday mm -hmm. morning are you with me Amen. because that is one way that we can build the church when you support it by your presence. You know that it encourages me when I see all of you. It builds my faith. And if half of you, please, I would open my heart right now. Open it wide before I... <laughs> I am a bit discouraged if I don't see people at church. Especially if half of our people are not here at church. In my heart as a pastor, I am so disheartened, discouraged if I don't see God's people here. Amen. It's just like throwing a big birthday party. You cook all night. You cook all night. And then the following day, the birthday itself, you woke up very early in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and you have been cooking. For the last two days, you have been cooking and preparing and everything. That everything is all set. Oh boy, there's so much food to feel. I mean, to, uh, to, to feed the whole community. But then no one came. Or probably three or four people came. And unfortunately, th those four people are your family inside the house. But no one, no one came. You gave the invitations. You have told them to come. But they didn't come. How would you feel? Mm -hmm. Working out all night, all day. Pre preparing food. And then the people that you have invited, they didn't even bother to call, text, tweet, Facebook, or say, I could not come. <laughs> How would you feel if you were, I mean, on that shoes? You will be what? Next time, I would never, ever dare invite you again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you will feel disappointment and frustrations. Amen. Amen. You have prepared and yet no one. You know what? Each Sunday, the Lord is preparing a banquet for His people every Sunday so that God's people will be blessed from Monday to Saturday until God will feed, feed them again the following Sunday. But unfortunately, God is so disheartened when His people do not come, do not show up. They did not wake up for some reason, or a lot of reasons. Or sick, I mean... I was sick last Sunday, but still I have to be here. I have no choice. I'm just kidding. But you see, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we build a church when we attend His church regularly. When I say regularly, not when you're in the mood. Not when everything is going okay. 
You know, Sister Risha Lynn, she's not here right now because probably she's still feeling, I, I've heard that she's not really well. But they have to travel from Burlington just to be here. And I imagine during those times how inconvenient for her to come here because the doctor said complete bed rest, but still she came up here to be prayed. I pray that God will never put us or bring us into that kind of situation only for us to realize how many things we are taking for granted. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That we should never miss worshiping the Lord regularly. We must not be lazy in attending our worship for God. Can you, can you talk to your neighbor? Don't be lazy. Hallelujah. And I pray that today, this year, 2013, if we have big dreams for ourselves, I know for us who've got children here, we have big dreams for our children. Oh, I want my child to be a doctor. Oh, I want my son to be an architect. Oh, I want him to be, to be a ballerina or, <laughs> <laughs> or um, a great pianist or I, I know what. I know you understand what I'm saying, that we have great dreams for our children. And even for us, you know what? I'm praying that God will give us a big house, or God will give us this kind of car, or God will just give us this and give us that. Most of the time, people listen to me. We just aspire things for ourselves. Hey, listen to me. Year 2013, why don't we aspire for something that are spiritual. Amen. Great things that are spiritual. Oh, I pray that in year 2013, I will mature. I will grow in the spirit. Amen. That in the year 2013, I will read my Bible every day. That in the year 2013, I will pray every day. That I will attend the church every Sunday and Thursday. Hallelujah. That in the year 2013, uh, 2013 I could start um, leading the Bible study group. Amen. That I could uh, sing here with the, with the backup, with the music ministry. That I could play an instrument for God. Hallelujah. Are we aspiring that? That in each and every one of us, God have not saved us just to sit on those, on those uh, chairs every Sunday. But God wants us to serve Him in the way that we could serve Him. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. In the abilities that God has given us, in the grace that God has given us. Hallelujah. Why don't we dream great things for God? Hallelujah. For Him. Amen. Start doing that. If for those of us who have stopped, then go and move on. Move forward. Do the things that you have been doing before. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not yet too late. Amen. Amen. Great things for God. Practical tips that I would like to give in attending the church. We should exercise discipline. And when I say discipline, our worship starts at 10 o'clock. And we have Sunday school at 9.30. So by that, I'm talking about coming on time. Amen. Amen. That is how we practice discipline, by coming on time. What time do you come at work? What time does your children go to school? You are making a point that you are not tardy or you are not late when you go to work. Isn't that right? Because it could mean that you could lose your job. But why is it that God, who de deserves all respect and honor and glory, how come we afford to be late all the time in coming to worship? Well, Pastor Jay, because I'm not going to lose anything. Oh, yes, you are. Your respect for God. But God do not see me. How do you know God do not see you? <laughs> Probably some of us, we've got problems preparing on Sunday morning because on Saturday night, we're not prepared. People of God, listen to me. The Jewish people have what they call the Sabbath. 
Okay, but before Sabbath comes on Friday night, they already prepare for it. Everything that they're going to need so that they won't do anything on Sabbath, they will do it on a Friday. It is the same thing for us, okay? For us not really to be so stressed out during Sunday morning, let us prepare the clothes that we're going to wear on Sunday, not that you're going to iron on Sunday morning. Amen. And then you're cooking breakfast at the same time. And then you're going to give your kids a bath. Why don't you give your kids bath on Saturday night so that they're prepared on Sunday morning? And all your clothes that you're going to wear, okay, just prepare it by Saturday night. And if it takes for you an hour to put on your makeup, Saturday night, put on your makeup and then go to sleep. So that when you wake up in the morning, whatever time you wake up, you're already prepared. Just do a little retouch here. <laughs> what I'm, I mean, funny as it may, but at times, this, these are the reasons why we come to church late. And also, we need to avoid late night activities. If you know that on Sunday that you're going to worship the Lord, I am also telling all those who have their Bible studies on Saturday night, please, I don't want any Bible studies that extends 11 o'clock at night or even 1 o'clock, 1 point. Mm -mm, that is not right. I mean, in as much as we want to have fellowship, but that is also an abuse because the next thing is that you cannot come early in the morning. It's just a pl practical thing. Probably if you are having Bible study on a Saturday night, the latest that you'll gather probably is around 10 o'clock, then go home. But make sure that you need to prepare for the next day of worship. We need to exercise discipline. You know, when you send your kids to school, they are so disciplined. And when we go to work, we're so disciplined. Pastor Jay, my problem why we're late is because kids do not wake up early on Sunday. But mind you, Monday to Friday, your kids wake up 6 o'clock in the morning. Whether they're awake or not, you'll pull them up. And Crystal's brushing her teeth, still eyes closed. <laughs> if we could do that from Monday to Friday, don't use your children as an excuse that for being late at church. No, you yourself, you need to instill in them that church is important. The reason why our children do not put so much importance on church is because the way we treat, the way we act, it is as if church is not important, that God is not important, that he deserves the less. Are you with me? That's why it, it, it just translating them, the way that they treat church, is, it is not so important because my mom and dad, they don't care if we're late or not. They don't even, they're not care. They don't care. People of God, that is not the way to build the church of God. Are you with me? Amen. Wake them up early in the morning. Our service starts 9.30, okay? And you can wake them up 8 o'clock if everything is all set, okay? Unlike from Monday to Friday, they, they woke up 6 o'clock, or 6.30, that is so early. But if you can do it from Monday to Friday, why not on Sunday? Since it is the Lord's day, since that is the center of your life and the most important thing in your life. The second, worship in the right attitude. Paul said, I want all men to lift their hands. You know what he's talking about? Lifting the hands, meaning worshiping the Lord with nothing that is going on inside. Amen. If we need to forgive one another, if we need to confess uh, against offenses, then we need to do that. You know, we can never worship God with a heart that is full of negative things. Are you with me? The Bible says that even before we come to God to worship him, that we need to settle things that we need to settle. We need to worship the Lord in the right attitude. Hallelujah. And even for spouses, I, I think this is one of the, one of the most common things that happens uh, between husband and wife before they go to church. They would, ah, or even to our children. Ah, and you know, to tell you the truth, it kind of, uh, it just, um, it just dampens our spirit, right? It just causes our spirit to grieve. That's why during praise and worship, uh, the worship leader, come on people, worship the Lord! And then you just, <laughs> 
Come on, lift your hands. Higher. Higher. Isn't it when a flag that is half raised, somebody's dead? <laughs> so you're half raised because some, somebody's dead. <laughs> You see, people, we need to get rid of all of those. If everything is prepared on a Saturday night, probably there is less stress, less, less chaos, and less commotion that's going to happen on Sunday morning. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. That we need to worship in the right attitude. The third is high respect for the Word of God. Amen. It's funny in the Philippines because Bishop Mar says that Whenever he's preaching the word, no one is allowed literally to stand up. Because that is disrespect. And at one point, are you side of the sanctuary? Let's build a urinal. <laughs> so that those who would go, they'll just go there. <laughs> it is funny, but... At times, I mean, no offense for those who really need to use the bathroom. But there are people who, they don't need to use the bathroom, but they just check their cell phones there at the back. That is disrespect. You need to turn all those cell phones, except for those who are on call. Amen. Amen. Just put them on, vibra on, on vibrations. <laughs> But it is disrespect. Not only are you distracting yourself, you are distracting your neighbors. <coughs> and even not just your neighbors, me. Or even whoever is the messenger. If you stand up, most of the time, two or three times going there in the bathroom. I mean, if you really need to go, you need to go. Unless you've got a a catheter or something. But I don't want you to do that. What I'm just talking about is that for the next 45 minutes that the Word of God is to be shared, that we need to give respect to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And not just go into the bathroom. Don't sleep also. There is a time for sleep in your own bedroom. Amen. And not during. The time that the word of God is being shared. Or probably what we could do here at church, I'll give you a pillow and some blankets just to make you comfortable. But no, we are losing. We are losing what God had intended for us to receive. It's because we are unwise. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now, God is pouring out his blessing. But what are we doing? Are we there to grab it or are we just, oh, I don't care? Attitude. Attending the church. Another is look for an opportunity to serve Christ in the church. Hallelujah. Pastor Jay, what can I do? Start in small things. I'm not asking you to stand here to preach. I'm not asking you to lead the worship. But look for ways that you can serve the Lord even in small things. Probably you could start by prayer at home. Pray for the church. Or probably you could start by going to your neighbor and telling them about the love of Jesus. That is one way. Amen. We start with small things, not those big grandeur things. I'm not asking you for things that you're going to do here. But look for an opportunity to serve the Lord. And you can serve the Lord while at home and even here at church. By ushering and greeting the people there. By volunteering yourself to, can I teach in our Sunday school? Amen. Or can I be the pastor? Can I, can I uh, kick you, Pastor Jane, get out? Yes, if the Lord would tell me. He will be the next one. <laughs> but until I, I don't hear from the Lord, I'll still be here. So another, second one, how can we build a church? Another that we can build a church is by loving and taking care of one another. Hallelujah. By loving and taking care of one another. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 to 27. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church. Hallelujah. We are a glorious church. Amen. Amen. And whose church is this? Who is this? 
you and me amen we are a glorious church without a spot without a wrinkle or any other blemish hallelujah in the eyes of god we are flawless yeah. amen. amen without blemish <laughs> we are spotless no wrinkles all those with wrinkles say amen, amen. <laughs> hallelujah and so if the church is a spotless wrinkle free and unblemished church we need to treat and we need to consider one another as well hallelujah Amen. do not put wrinkles on your brothers and your sisters hallelujah can you look at your neighbor look at them do they have wrinkles amen people let us not put wrinkles on one another what do you mean pastor jay let us not be the source of grief for one another let us not be the source of problem for one another let us be the source of joy and encouragement and hope and not disappointment frustrate frustration frustrations <laughs> crustaceans frustrations and disappointment in short do not cause wrinkles to come on one another but instead we should be source of hope and joy and encouragement so pastor jay how can we uh show this how can we build a church through this through letter a we are building the church when we love our spouse and our family if husbands love their wives and if lo wives love their husbands in return we are building the church if fathers love their family or mothers love their family we are building the church what do you mean pastor jay because one of the things that the devil attacks is the family if a family is disunited if a family is messed up then this family that will go to church they will mess up the church in return they will destroy the church are you with me so that's why the family is the one single unit that God wants to be intact so that the church is made up of families that are united in the spirit and in the love of Christ that there is unity that there is love in the heart of the husband for the wife and that there is submission in the heart of the wife for her husband and that the children have respect love and obedience for their parents are you with me this is how we build the church by loving one another amen by loving our families by loving our spouse that is how we build the church amen so how can you build the church in the family by loving your wife by loving your husband by loving your children then we are building the church because we do not give the devil even an inch for him to work in our families amen. hallelujah it's because of our love for them that we are shunning away the devil and how else can we um can uh, can we show this the second one is by by loving our body oh i love this this body <laughs> Amen. the bible says that we need to take care of our body because out from these bodies these are the temple of the holy spirit because if we destroy our bodies it is just like destroying the church why because we consist of the church are you with me today that's why we need to take care of even our bodies hallelujah praise the lord how can we take care of our bodies watch what we eat oh that's easy pastor i'll just watch <laughs> and then i'm gonna eat it <laughs> or the seafood diet ye all know the seafood diet that we eat all the food that we see 
And then exercise. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, Amen people who exercise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to take care of this body. Hallelujah. Because we just got one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, um, and Lola Pauline celebrated her birthday 77th year. And mom celebrated her birthday 70 years. And I think I was praying uh, during two Saturdays ago. Lord, we pray that we will still reach the age of 77 looking like them. Very strong. Yeah. Amen. And very young. But then we prayed for the food. <laughs> Lord, give us the courage to resist the eat, to eat <laughs> all this food. Hallelujah. I pray that God, amen, will allow us to live that long. Like in the Bible, 70 years is God's gift for man to live. Okay? After 70 years... It's already a bonus. It's already added life. Amen. Another way that we could uh, build a church by taking care of one another, loving one another, is by loving others. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor, I love you? I love you. But I won't marry you. <laughs> I just love you. Amen. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, how can we say we love God? Amen. But we do not love others. Oh, I love God and you. I cannot love you. That is impossible. Because the Bible says in 1 John that how can anyone say he loved God and he hates his brother when he could see his brother and he could not see God? Brothers and sisters, let us love one another. Let us be patient with one another. Amen. Let us, let us accept one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Love one another unconditionally because that is how God has loved us. With all our imperfections, with all of our flaws, with all of our failures and everything we are with all the package that's in there, God had accepted us. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember the song, You got to love me for what I am, for simply being me. I don't know the rest of it anymore. But we should love one another for who we are. Amen. Amen. Are you with me today? Amen. And this is the last one. So we build a church through joining ourselves together. We build a church by loving and taking care of one another. And this is the last one. We build a church by paying our tithes and our offering. Oh, pastors, I don't like that one. Just disregard, erase. But people of God, to tell you the truth, that this church will not be here without this. God in his own wisdom has secured a system on how his church could move, on how his church could go, on how his church could survive. Because without these teachings, none of these things will be here. There will be no building for us to gather. Or probably we've got building but we don't have light I will be, where are you people? Are you with me? <laughs> or if we have if got no electricity, okay. It will be cold here. And you would say, you know, I think I just go home. At home it will be comfortable. Here it's not. But let's go to Haggai, chapter 1, verse 4. And this is what the Lord is asking. Why are you living in luxurious houses? while my house lies in ruins. And all people living in luxurious houses say, Amen. <laughs> I am not going to expect that you would say, Amen, because you are so humble. 
<laughs> You're so humble that you would say, that's not a luxurious home. I've got the smallest home in the corner. But you see, to compare your homes with the homes where the homes that they have, their bed would be made of pieces of carton and their roof would just be pieces of garbage. Would that be luxury? To compare what we have with them, we are living in castle and palaces. Soft, comfortable bed, temper pitic <laughs> memory foam. <laughs> and you got even your number that you click. What's your number? The bed that kind of flips. You got your number. What do you call that? Probably what we're thinking about luxury is the house of probably who's rich person here. Uh, of, of, of Donald Trump in one of his luxurious hotels. Or, or. But you know what? The Lord is telling us, why are you asking us? The Lord, why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what is happening to you. You have planted much. But harvest little. You eat, but are not satisfied. Are you with me? Next slide. You drink, but are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but cannot keep warm. Your wage, your salary, disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. Isn't that insane? Isn't that, fo isn't that foolish? I mean, you're putting something in your pocket where you know for a fact that there is hole in it and it will not contain. Everything that you put in there will just be put to waste. Mm -hmm. Insanity as you may call it from what we read. But you know what? That is how we live our lives at times, insanity. We put so much things for ourselves, but we forget the command of God. It's just like we are. We are living in insanity. Are you with me today? Okay. Is there another one in there or that's the last one? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills. Bring down the timber and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. How can we rebuild the house of God? By bringing what the Lord is requiring of us to do. Malachi 3.10, bring into the storehouse, bring into my temple your tithes and your offerings so that there will be food in my storehouse, the Lord said. What is food? Who's going to eat that food? It's not the literal food, but it is the sustenance, the provision of this church. We pay mortgage for this church. We paid electricity I know by now, you know that nothing here is free. Except probably for the air you breathe that is free. Amen. But everything is not. That's why God has his own way of sustaining his church. That we build a church by doing what God has instructed for us to do. That God is Lord over every area in our lives. Even the very blessing that he has given us, we are not withholding what God had said belongs to him. I know that this is not a very comfortable subject, especially in our generation, especially in this kind of people. Because a lot of us will just be disputing in our minds, Pastor Jay, you just don't know. You just don't know. How do you know I don't know? <laughs> I know because I myself, my family, we have needs. And in fact, I work as well. I know. I work two nights a week to supplement our need. But I do not fail to give what God has required of me to give. 
Pastor Noel has given a, a, a wonderful testimony of how God had, had blessed and sustained him the first time he came here. You know, I want to tell you the truth. When I came in here, I'm still single during that time. When I came here in the United States, I have no money in my pocket. I came here as a tourist, but I was sent here to pastor the church here more than 10 years ago. 10 or 11 years ago. I came here literally with no money in my pocket. But I know that my God will supply all of my needs. And I would say to all of you that it is only because of His grace that I am standing right now to where I'm standing. It is only because of Him. Not anything good, not anything I have done. But it is only because of the grace of God. But listen to me. One testimony that I would share to all of you. I have been faithful in what God has commanded in his word to do. I have given my tithe. I have given my offerings unto him. God, until this time, had never, I would say it again. But he had blessed me so much. More than I could ever imagine or think. More than 10, 12 years ago, living here in the United States is just a dream for me. But now, this dream has become a reality. All because of the grace of God. All because of the goodness of God. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we can build a church by not just involving ourselves physically, but also by doing our part in sustaining the needs of this church. Amen. With that being said, as you give what God had required of you to give, it is Him who will make it a point that He will see your needs being provided. Amen. Because His name is Jehovah Jireh. He is our great provider that he already sees what you're going to need. Amen. Amen. He have already seen what you're going to need. That's why he will be there to meet your need. But of course, we have to obey.